All right, folks, it's Bass Action back in action here. In this video, we're going to talk about the equation of a circle. Some of this is going to be review from geometry and some of this is going to be new. So let's start here at the top and look at what is the equation for a circle. And I want to remind you again that the equation of a circle, the Pythagorean theorem, and the distance formula are all the same equation, just rearranged. Starting with our definition of a circle, it's the set of points that are equidistant from a given point. Now, the point that they're going to be equidistant from that given point is going to be our center. So you can see here in the figure that I've already given you that we are going to have our center and we are going to call it HK. And then we're going to have some point on the circle out here, we'll call it x, y. Every point on the circle will satisfy the equation, and we could draw in our radius here and call that r. So if we need to know the distance, let's say, from our center to any point on the circle, we could go ahead and we could find that distance. And of course, the distance is going to be the square root just thinking distance formula, and the difference of the x values. So I'm going to write that as an x minus h. Of course, I could reverse this, but I'm going to write this in our standard form that we're going to end up with. So the square root of the difference of the x's squared, the square, add that to the difference of the y coordinates, so y minus k squared, and that's going to equal the radius. So the radius is the distance between those points. Now, all we're going to do is take this distance formula and square both sides of the equation, and we'll have x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. That is the equation for our circle. We're going to use this equation throughout this video. Now, this definition is also on page 34 of your textbook. The unit circle is something that we're going to study in great depth second semester, and a unit circle is simply a circle with a unit of one or a radius equal to one unit. And when we think about symmetries that we discussed in some earlier videos, what we're going to think about is a circle that has a center at zero, zero, in which case it's going to have all three symmetries for us. Okay, so keep in mind it's going to have all three symmetries. Circles are not functions. They're going to fail the vertical line test, so it's okay that it has all three symmetries. Let's take a look at this first example and think about how we can use this equation for our circle. So the equation that I've given you here for the circle that's shown is going to be x squared plus y squared equals 16 which means the center of the circle I've given you is at zero, zero. This center right here would be zero, zero, and the radius of this circle would be four. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw in a, a radius. Now I'm choosing to draw in this radius, recognizing that of course this is a radius as well. I like this radius best because it goes from my center and actually nicely touches both the square and the circle. So if I was asked to find the area of the shaded region, just like you did in geometry, we're gonna think about what is our bigger object, that's the circle, and we're gonna subtract the area of the smaller object, and that would be our square. Remember, the area for a circle is going to be pi r squared, and the area for the square, I could certainly do a base times a height, but that's not gonna be very useful for me because I don't know these lengths. So we're going to think about the other formula that you have for the area of a square from your geometry days, and that's going to be 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2, because a square is also a rhombus, and that was our rhombus formula, which means we can easily do this thinking the radius was 4 for the circle, so we're going to get a 16 pi. You could certainly do this in your head, but the area of the square is gonna be 1 half 8 times 8. So our answer is very quickly 16 pi minus 32. I don't know my unit of measurement, so I'm gonna call it unit squared. So you, it is important that you remember both ways to calculate the area of a square because one might be more useful than the other. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at an equation and we're going to try to graph this. 
Now, in the form that I've given this to you, this is called our general form. General form is when everything has been expanded out instead of in that factored form. Now, the factored form is going to be easier for us to graph, so we need to convert this. What we're going to do is we're going to complete the square for both the x and the y terms. It's necessary to do it for both because when I look at my equation, I see that I have a linear term for x and a linear term for y. If either one of those was missing, I would not have to complete the square for that piece. But since both of them are there, we're going to get this set up. So to start it off, what we're going to say is x squared plus my 8x. I'm going to group my variables, and I'm going to put in a blank for completing the square. Then I'm going to group the y's plus y squared minus my 4y. I'm going to insert my blank so I remember to balance. And that's going to equal, I'm going to move this constant to the right-hand side. So I'm going to have 16 plus, and I'm going to have two blanks to properly balance my equation. Now, when I balance this equation, this first blank here, I'm taking the 8, dividing it by 2, and squaring it. So that's going to become a 16. So I'm going to put a 16 over here. In my next blank, I'm going to take my negative 4 and divide it by 2 and square it. And that's going to give me a 4. So I'm going to balance my equation. Now, writing each of my terms as the perfect squares, I'm going to have an x plus a 4 quantity squared plus, didn't mean to write the equals there, plus y minus 2 quantity squared, then I can quickly add, I've got my 32 plus my 4, or my 36. And now I have my equation in what we will call standard form. This form is going to be our easiest to graph because we can easily identify that center as a negative 4, positive 2. So I can go ahead and I can plot that center. I can easily see that my radius is going to be 6 because I'm doing the square root. This part should be review from geometry. So I'm going to go up 6. I'm going to go to the right 6. I'm going to go to the left 6. And I'm going to go down 6. And then I'm just going to sketch that circle in. I personally find it easier if I do it in little quarters. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that north, south, east, west should be correct. The next thing, if I want to find the intercepts, this form is really, really nice. So if I let, for example, y equals 0 to find my x-intercepts, I'm going to get an x plus 4 quantity squared plus a 4 equals my 36. So I'm going to have an x plus 4 quantity squared equals 32. Taking the square root of each side, I'm going to do some things in my head here. So I'm going to get an x equals a negative 4 plus or minus. Simplifying that square root of 32, I'm going to get 4 radical 2. So then I can write that as an ordered pair, comma 0. Now, what I want you to think about when you go to check this answer is what we know is that 32, 32 is slightly smaller than the square root of 30, square root of 32 is slightly smaller than the square root of 36. So it's just a little bit less than six. So when you're checking this, what you're really thinking is a negative four plus and minus mm, about six. It should actually be a little less than six. So if you do that quick arithmetic, you'll be able to check that these x-intercepts make sense for us. We're going to do the same thing for the y-intercept, but we're going to let our x value equal 0. So now I'm going to have 16 plus y minus 2 quantity squared equals my 36. So then y minus 2 quantity squared equals 20. I'm going to skip another step here, square root and square root of each side. So when I go to write this one as an ordered pair, the x value was 0. The y coordinate, I can jump and see that I'm going to have a 2 plus or minus. Simplifying the square root of 20, I get 2 radical 5. 
So I certainly could write out those steps, but it's okay to get comfortable being able to see them um, just in your head. All right, now my last one that I'm going to do is going to be to find the standard and the general form of a circle whose center is at two negative three and is tangent to a line at y equals negative four. So this one's gonna be helpful if we can draw ourselves just a small sketch of this. So I'm going to give myself an x, y axis. I'm going to go ahead and put my center in the proper quadrant, so negative two, three. And I'm going to sketch in the line y equals negative four. So this is gonna be my center. I know that this was up three, and I know this is down seven. If my circle is going to be tangent to this, I know that my circle is gonna come down and it's gonna look something like this. Now, this picture doesn't have to look great, but the idea that I'm trying to visualize is that that's my radius, okay? So it's gonna be tangent to it. So I can see that the radius of my circle by the way, this row is a, I wrote a seven there. Um, I can see that my radius is going to actually be seven units. So when I go to write this, since I know the center, I'm going to have an x plus two, because remember, I have to subtract that x coordinate. I'm gonna add that y minus three, because I'm subtracting the y coordinate. I'm going to square the radius, and I'm gonna get 49. To get this in general form, I just need to expand everything. So very quickly, x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus y squared minus 6y plus 9 equals 49. Moving everything over, x squared plus 4x plus y squared minus 6y, collecting the constants. And then when I move that 49 over, I'm going to get minus 36 equals zero. So this will be our general form, although I won't have you write it very often, and this will be our standard form. Okay, that's all I've got. And um, there is a reflection question for you on the next page of your notes, and we'll do some more examples in class.